Alrighty, now that we got all the math and the theory out of the way, let's go on to actually uh, doing the experiment. So if you read through your lab manual or you come to class and you're doing the lab, uh, you'll already know what this stuff is, especially because it was just explained to you, but I'm going to go over it again. So first we have the Helmholtz coils. There are an N number of turns. Your book will tell you how many tur turns are in there of coil that has electricity flowing through, obviously, and that's going to produce a magnetic field. Uh, as you guys should know from the previous lab or from your lecture, if we have a current going in a circle, the magnetic field is more or less going to be straight, and in this case, it's going out towards the camera. We also have a power supply that's going to produce the current in the coils, and we also have an electron gun that is shooting electrons. As if you could see the beam, then you could see that there are electrons, but we'll get into that in a second. So first, you want to turn everything on. That should be pretty obvious. Uh, and we'll start taking measure measurements from there. From the theory, we know that we only need three main uh, variables. We need the voltage supplied, we need the current, which will give us the magnetic field, and we need the radius of the electron beam. Uh, well, in your books, the experiment is going to start with the voltage. You're going to take three different voltages, one at around 260 volts, one at around 300 volts, and one at around 360 volts. Uh, for this video, we'll be, we will be doing the 260 volts. And so once you get that set up, you have the voltage put in. Now you need the radius and the current, because the, again, the current gives you the magnetic field. Uh, from the power supply, we have the current set to 140 because we are going to take two uh, measurements for each of the different, for each of the three different voltages. The first one will be set to 1.4 amps. So now we have two of our variables. We have the voltage, which again is 260. We have the current, which again is 140. And now we just need the radius. As we told you in the theory part of the video, the electrons in this sphere are going to be curving. Again, using the right hand rule, where we have the uh, electrons going towards that wall. We have the magnetic field going towards the camera. And that creates a circle of electrons moving counterclockwise. So if you, if you can't see the electrons, we're going to turn the lights off so you can see them. As you can see here, there is a circle of electrons inside the sphere. There is also a mirrored ruler behind that. So you will use that ruler to measure the radius. I will do that for you real quick. Around six and a half centimeters. That is a very crude measurement. But now that the lights are back on, uh, in your table, you will see that you have a current column. And obviously, each table is split up for each different voltage. So now you just put the radius that you measure. If you're working in groups, which you won't be, you would take multiple averages. But since you'll be working by yourselves or using the simulations online, you will simply just need to measure the radius of the circle and write that down in your column. And now, as with the theory, if we have the voltage, the current, which will, you can then use to calculate the magnetic field, and the radius of the electron's circle, then we have enough information to get an estimate of the E over M ratio.